quick disclaimer before we start the video this is not a clickbait i actually did get these shoes for free i got them at a raffle from bodega i actually couldn't get those uh these shoes when they did the raffle because they didn't release until two weeks ago so i had to wait for almost a month uh that's that but other than that let's start the video what is up guys this is kane you can probably tell from the title or from my quick disclaimer there that we're talking about these shoes right here the Nike Vapor Max in the asphalt colorway. Now again, I'm not gonna be the captain obvious here. You've seen these shoes countless times. Nike really made a big push, big ad campaign for these shoes. So if you're into shoes and you don't know about these, please let me know which rock you're living under because it must be really, really comfortable. Now, I just want to explain some things I've experienced with these shoes to help out, you know, any potential buyers out there. So first of all, this upper is actually quite a nice stretchy flannel upper. It's definitely more friendly to white feet people. So if you're a white footer, I think you could stay true to size on these. The midsection is a little narrow though, so I think the best bet is still to try them out in stores if you can, or order from Nike.com. That being said about the upper, there is one flaw. So this part right here, this part in the heel, it really digs into your Achilles. When I first tried them on, I immediately felt it. I was wearing no-show socks, obviously, so if you're wearing quarter socks or crew socks, it might be a lot better for you, but with these shoes, I think it looks best if you're wearing no-show socks. So with these, you might experience a pretty long break in time and or bloody ankles slash Achilles. Yeah. I do really like the tongue design though. It does look like a separate tongue on the outside, but it's actually connected on the inside. So you don't get these annoying chafing problems with some other running shoes, especially with my Flyknit racers. These, those shoes are amazing running shoes, but the tongue sometimes annoys the shit out of me. And one other thing that I want to touch on is this sole. Now, when these shoes first came out, a lot of people, including me, had this skepticism that this outsole is just not going to be as durable as, say, a traditional Air Max outsole. The channel What's Inside did a cut open video of these Vapor Max shoes and the shoes proved to be pretty pretty durable actually but as you can see right here there are tubes connecting these bigger chambers and as you can see these tubes are located unfortunately at the flex grooves or the flex points on the outsole so i don't know how these are going to hold up in the long run take the kd9 for example the kd9 had a very similar design on the outsole it has this one tube connecting the two zoom chambers and that tube was so infamous for breaking. And my other concern is how these will fare in cold weather. Rubber material tends to get a lot more brittle uh, in cold weather and me being in New England in Boston it gets pretty cold up here during the winter. So you know what if these just break in the middle of winter? These are probably not my first choice for running shoes in the winter anyways just because these are so well ventilated and I don't really want to freeze my feet up but you know just in case someone runs in those and the air pocket just decides to give up. Now I think the biggest question for a lot of people is that are these shoes worth it over the Ultra Boost? Especially since that they're in that kind of same 180-190 price range and also that comfort is really their biggest feature. And my answer, my take on that question is that it really depends on what you're looking in a pair of shoes. For example, the Ultra Boost, the, when you first put them on, they're immediately comfortable. The Prime Knit is very, very st stretchy, it's very comfortable. And the Boost, obviously, you already know about the comfort of Boost, it's amazing. The Vapor Max, on the other hand, it provides a different type of comfort. It's a little bit more substantial and you might need to break them in just to feel the comfort a little bit more. But once you break them in, the comfort is definitely there and it's actually a little bit more solid and more substantial and you can feel kind of the feedback a little bit more uh, than boost cushioning. So if you want a solid, substantial, stable shoe, I would say, you would want to go with the Vapor Max. If you want something a little bit more casual and something that 
is just immediately comfortable, go with the Ultra Boost. Also a plus, if you're someone who's on the bigger side, uh, you might actually find the Vapor Max a little bit more comfortable. You know, the heavier the weight, the more compressed the air will be, and obviously the more cushion there will be. If you're someone like me who's only about 120 something pounds, uh, this shoe will require quite a bit of breaking time. I'm not saying they're not comfortable, they're already very, very comfortable, but they will require maybe, I don't know, two weeks or three weeks before they feel uh, very soft and very cushy. And that's all I wanted to say about these Vapor Maxes. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I've noticed that people have subscribed and commented. I think I have 20 something subscribers now. It's not a big number by any means, but I definitely want to thank each and every one of you. You guys are the motivation for me to make more content. And I know I've kind of gone on a hiatus uh, in the past month or so, uh, just because school has gotten really busy, but I'm falling down with my finals, so. Expect a lot more dope content coming this summer. Again, thank you so much for watching. I am Kane, and until next time, take it easy and peace.